Coppinger of the AAA People Before Profit Party. Thanks for joining us, uh, uh, Ruth, on the, the programme. This government counter motion effectively means, does it not, that your bill is, is defunct. Is the time not uh, upon you to row in, in behind the agreed mechanism, get behind the Citizens' Assembly and get us behind this Doyle All-Party uh, Committee now? Well, I think the majority of people in society know there has to be a referendum to repeal what's an odious, dangerous and anti-woman amendment, and that's always been the consensus. Today what's happened is the government has effectively created a timeline which would suggest there won't be a referendum in the lifetime of this government because 2018 really will be the most earliest that that could happen and the government may not even be in existence. But we, we have a timeline at, at least. Is that not progress? Uh, we have had such a timeline in in decades. And we heard Minister Zappone say that she expects uh, something as early as the early part of 2018. Well, f first of all, the timeline is in relation to what's written down is only that the Citizens' Assembly would have to report back by June 2017. You would then need a dull committee, you would then need a bill, all of those things have a process. It would be getting very near an election and the government, I think, would back off. But and essentially... You don't go with uh, Catherine's No, the, the uh, independents have facilitated uh, in a very U-turn uh, fashion. I mean, Catherine Zappone was elected on the basis of the marriage equality referendum and being progressive on social issues. Also, Shane Ross and the others would have staked their lives on being against whips. And you know that they will say, you know, government is a difficult place to be. It's about collective cabinet responsibility. I think the word used uh, there by Shane Ross was, uh, this is the mature way to deal with this most sensitive and contentious of issues. People are past waiting now for more Irish solutions to Irish problems. We have a whole new generation, particularly young people, who you would have seen on the historic March for Choice, who want repeal of the Eighth Amendment and are really enraged that that has been deprived, that they have not had a chance in 33 years. Sure, and we there all is know another body of people out there, and you know this, Ruth, that feel equally, viscerally about this really, really difficult, contentious subject. And what the government is, is, is opting for is a, a considered uh, debate on this, on this subject. Well, the government could have facilitated this bill passing because it has to go through several more stages. And if they agree with the concept of a referendum, that's all they have to do. There can then be a discussion about what kind so of... So repeal it and then replace it with nothing, just a straightforward... I, I think that's critical, that end. women's bodies and health are not dealt with in the Constitution, because then if any change is required, you need another referendum. And I think we've seen the dangers of that. We're in the fourth anniversary this week of the death of Savita Halapanavar, and the government isn't even talking about legislating for abortion on health grounds. But I, I think the, the government did act, didn't they, on the, the protection of life during pregnancy uh, bill. They did uh, deal with the, the, the Supreme Court ruling that previous governments didn't go near. In the most conservative interpretation, unfortunately, and with a 14-year jail sentence for women, and don't forget there's 12 women every single day leaving this state to access abortion either abroad or through medical abortion pills online. Those women can't just be ignored forever. I, I know you disagree with the projected timeline. You, you, you do accept, presumably, that this really has been firmly put on the political agenda and as such must be seen, from your perspective at least, to be, to be progress. Yeah, I, I think that there's a hugely popular movement now for repeal. We've seen all the indications of that. And we also have people who aren't willing to accept the pace of slow, incremental change that we've been told is all we can have in this country. I think that young people are much more impatient that this issue be dealt with, and women, of course, in particular, who are at the, the brunt of this uh, amendment. All right, Ruth, thank you so much uh, for joining us on the programme. Thank you.